Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, just, just some things. How many in here are 50 or above? Awesome. Awesome. Way above? Okay. How many are under the age of 50? It's about, about time. It's about time. Well, let me just share something with you. I, I was just... Uh, I was in prayer about God. I got to do something. We have a we have a a, a a age group that we're not ministering to, and it's fifty and above, and and we're not ministering to them. We also have another one that's the widows and widowers that we're not ministering to. We're, there's nothing really for them. And then we have another group which is the 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 young married or, or, or not young married. Not necessarily. I hate that term. Um, uh, young adult, young adults. That they need to come together and, and be at people's... Brother Buddy, uh, did you say it at Sunday school? Did you say it at church? Where they need to get together and, and, and have fellowship together. Yeah. And uh, and I was talking, I was just praying to the Lord. I said, God, i got to have some help. We've got to have some ministry in that area. We have to have uh, some, some things. And I'd like to, you know, just to share with you that I, I understand. I was talking to Brother Posey. And Brother Posey, it was, him and I were just talking. He wasn't... He wasn't mentioning anything about it. We we're just talking, and he said, "You know, uh, when I was in Missouri, we'd all get, we all had a bunch of couples. We'd all get around, and we'd all have dinner and stuff at each, each other's house." I thought, "You know, that's probably a good idea," because Brother Posey's just lonely. Yeah. Yes. Now, Chris has been gone now for a while, and and he just needs some fellowship and some things to go on in his life. And and we uh we we always talk about the remnant being the youth. Yeah. Yeah. They're not the remnant. The remnant are, are you, the 50 and above, because you're part of the original cloth. Amen? Amen? And we need to take care of you. And so we always say, well, the young people, they're going to come along. They're going to come along. Well, young people, I can't wait for the young people to get a fire for God. Why don't we show the young people what it means to live for God, and then maybe they'll come along and follow our example. And the reason I was, I was thinking about that, I was thinking about our youth um, back in my day, our youth service consisted of coming to church and coming to church. There wasn't youth service. That's when we were little. There wasn't youth service, was there, Tracy? There was service. There was no nothing. It was service. We came to church. And we learned from the older how to serve God. And then there's that generational gap there where we forgot to, uh, to include the younger in worship and forgot to include them in church. And they don't know how to follow after the leading of, of the Holy Ghost because they've never been around the leading of the Holy Ghost. Right. Right. Okay. There's a remnant of people that are left that know what I'm talking about. There's a remnant of people that are left in the church that understand that God is more than just coming to church and singing some worship yeah. and then leaving. Yeah. I heard, I, you know, people always say, well, Jeff, how come we don't learn new worship songs? Well, first of all, it's a time issue. Amen. Second of all, it's, I can't, there's a lot of songs that I don't like. I don't care if they're popular on radio, I don't like them. And, you know, I don't need, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can I just go ahead and meddle? Uh, I don't need a song that talks about Jesus being my lover. He's my Savior. And I don't need somebody to sing a song like he's my wife. I need somebody to talk about the blood of Jesus and the cruci and I need that. I need that. And there's a lot of songs out there that they may be popular on the Christian chart, but I just don't like them. And so there's a lot of things, and I don't mean to... to Dismiss that. I don't, I'll never go back to old flat top. I'm not. We, we're gonna we're gonna sing popular worship songs and we're we'll gonna go back to some of the old every now and then. But hear me this this evening. We we've got to understand that we've got to include young people in worship and we have to show them what it means to live for God. Amen. You 50 and overs. It's time for you to be an example of what it's like to be a Christian. Be an example of what it's like to worship. Don't leave it up to the young people to worship. Raise your hand and worship God. And, and be in the, in the house of God. And listen, I, I, we have problems like everybody else does. You know, we'll look tonight. Uh, we, we didn't have any singers back here. We didn't have a drummer, we, uh, a guitar player. And it, that just comes back from, it's a want-to thing. 
And then, don't get mad at me and then want to. I've had people mad at me before. I've had people be nice to me this week so I can have people mad at me too. Okay? And so, but that's a want to thing. That's a servant mastership. Because if you're a servant mastership, you won't serve if you don't have to. But as a son, you'll, you'll serve because you want to. And so, I, I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but just, that's just an example. Please don't tell them I'm picking on them because I'm not. It's just an example. It'd be like if you taught Sunday school and you just didn't show up. Or if, you, if I was just, you know, maybe I just didn't show up Sunday. Huh? I didn't feel like it. I was tired. I slept in. Sunday's my only day to sleep, buddy. I, I slept in until 10.30. I drug out about 11, showed up about 11.15. It'd be the same difference. And so, but if we, if, we, if we show people what it's like to live for the Lord, if we show people what it's like to, I'll read the scripture here in a minute, but if we show people what it's like to, 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 uh, to uh, stand up for, for the Lord and, and worship Him, and, and we need people that will, sorry, we need people that had a hair. <laughs> okay. We need people that'll, that'll stand up and be part of something. Listen, you're not the only one that's saying, well, they need to do it. Well, of course we need to do it, but I ain't doing anything else. I'm doing a lot that right now. I, I can't take on anything else. Yeah. Amen. Okay, four people said they agree with that. That's all right. I can't take on everything. Right. You know, some things are a good idea, but they may not be a God idea. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to, y'all are glad y'all came on Wednesday, aren't you? Uh, let me get to where I'm going here. I've marked it. I've got to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, glory. There is a bomb in Gilead. I'm looking for the uh, the verse that says there is a remnant. Do any Bible scholars tell me where that's at? I can look on my phone real fast. I got it. Uh, Isaiah 1 and 9. I was about to say Isaiah, but I wasn't sure if that was right or not, so I, I, I had to look it up. Isaiah 1 and 9. Isaiah 1 and 9. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Yeah. So I, I just need, let me just share something. Uh, you know, Daryl and Julia, they need somebody ministering to them. Julia, can I get a witness? Okay. Jayla, Austin, they need somebody ministering to them. Amen. Rick and April need someone ministering in that area. Not just me calling them, not just me, but somebody that will put an interest in their life. How about, how about uh, Sister Latricia and, and Sister Janice and Sandy and Pearl? They've all lost their husbands. Yeah. Amen. How about somebody ministering to them? That'd be kind of nice. How about that? How about, you know, Brother Ken, he lost his spouse. That'd be an amazing thing if somebody would, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but sometimes Sandy just, she can hardly make it. Sometimes she just, barely, she gets here by the skin of her teeth. And she's hanging, she's hanging on by a thread. A lot of times, Sister Sandy, just, she's just barely making it. She, I, I catch her in the back, she's crying. More Sundays than one. I've caught her back in the back in the office. She's crying. She said, I'm just ready to go. I'm just ready to go. That's an awful way to live. Just ready to go. Because she's so lonely and she's so hurt. And there's a, a lot of that stuff is just piles in. And, and I know some people have an easier time with it than others. I don't know if it ever gets easier. I don't know. But they deal with it better. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Okay, verse 1 and 9, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been in Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Listen, God has left us a remnant in the church. God has left us men and women who know what it's like to live for God. They remember what it was like. Sister Sharon, you remember what it was like to be embarrassed that you were Pentecostal because you had that stigma of you just uneducated, stupid, and you don't know nothing. Because we had that stigma of, of uh, long dresses and long sleeves and long hair and, and, and short hair and, and we, we couldn't do anything else. And all we could do was go to church and you couldn't do anything else. Remember that? I remember that and I'm young. 
And I remember that, you know, my brother, when he was at Pleasant Grove, my oldest brother, they were filling out paperwork. And you had to, back in the day, you had to put on, I think it was an FCA thing or something. You had to put what church you belonged to. And he put, he put First Baptist. He put First Baptist so he wouldn't be ridiculed because he was a Pentecostal kid. Right. And that was in 1971, 1972. And so don't, don't tell me it's been that so far removed. Now, God has left us a remnant. For, had He not left us a remnant, we would have forgotten what it's like to live for God. And we've forgotten what it's like to move in the Holy Ghost. And I'm so thankful for this church that we're able to still look back at our past and remember, but have a, have a vision for going forward. <laughs> Do you have a vision for going forward or not? Are you, are you ready to do something different than, than just be here? And also in Isaiah 4 and 3, go with me there. Isaiah 4 and 3. He said, And it shall come to pass that, that uh, he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy unto everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Listen, we have been given a, a, a wonderful opportunity. We've been given chance after chance. And listen, don't throw away what, the, what, our, what our forefathers knew. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with they, what they knew. Listen, I understand some of the silliness, but some of the silliness was meant to be good. Amen. It wasn't meant to hurt you. It was meant to push you along the way and keep you out of trouble. Yeah. A lot of the silliness that, that we minor, that we majored in, it didn't really matter anything about really just salvation, but it kind of, it kind of kept you out of situations. Uh -huh, and by keeping you out of situations, they made us, I don't know how to say it other than they made us kind of weird because we weren't like, every, and this, I'm not saying you're supposed to be like everybody else, but you weren't like just normal people. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. I said that, did I said that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have to be normal. But you don't have to be like them. Amen. What do you mean, Brother Jeff, by that? This is what I mean by that. You can't be crazy, so spiritually minded, you know, earthly good to anybody. You can't be so spiritually minded that you know, you know, how can I say this? Lord help me. You can't be so spiritually minded that you're not any good to anybody on the earth. To where you can't help anybody, where you can't say anything because, well, I, I, I can't be your friend because I saw one time you cussed. Right. My God, they need a friend. Amen. Right. Amen. I, that doesn't mean that it's all right for you to cuss, but it means it's all right to be their friend. Uh -huh. And say, hey, we love you. Yeah. We care for you. Uh -huh. and one of the denominations here in town, they won't let their family come to one of the meetings from the school of the Christian meeting because there's kids there that aren't Christians and we don't want to support them. That's the ones that need to be here. Amen. Yes. The, ones that, the ones that aren't saved need to come to a, some kind of Christian organization and maybe somebody will say something that might spark something in them. I just, I just thought, you got to be kidding me. How dare, then I can't support your school because there's not Christians in it, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It's a funny, it's a funny thing to me, brother, buddy, how they pick and choose what they, you know, it's, it's funny. They won't go to a bowling alley because they serve beer, but they'll eat Pizza Hut every Sunday. I, you know, I don't understand. They're walking every quick stop in town. And, you know, I don't understand that stuff. That stuff kind of bugs me. And, and that kind of, kind of stuff just gets under my skin. But that kind of stuff, we, we have to understand. Now, Brother Larry, how long were you a deacon in this church, Brother Larry Bruce? Probably two years. Two years. Yeah. That's a long time. That's a long time to get blamed for stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a long time to get the brunt of stuff. But you know what? I thank God that Larry's here. Amen. Amen. Another connection to my past. Yes. I, I thank God that Sister Carolyn's here. I thank God that Angie's here. Yes. I thank God for you being here. How many of you guys, uh, Brother Jim, how long have you and Sister Juanita to come to church here now? <coughs> 12 or 13 years. And buddy, this is the only church that he's ever called church other than his own. Yeah. You know? Janet, how long have you guys 
You're here for, before you went to Alaska, let's say about 15 years probably, I'll total something like that, 20 years. Long time. Long time. There's heritage here that's been here long. There's, it's just, and Teresa, yeah. her whole childhood was in this church, and then when she moved off and did her own thing, then she came back to the church because this is home. This is home. Brother James, how long have you been here? 72 years. Okay, he's been, he been here a long time, okay? But he's been here since he was a kid. But this is home. And God left you here for a reason. Please get with me and understand what I'm telling you tonight. God left you here as a pillar of this church for a reason. Because he knew that I would need you. He knew I would need that, that, that place I could reach back and say... Can, does anybody remember this? And can, that, that place where I can reach back and say, this is how you live for God. You don't live for God just any way you want to. You live for God the best way you know how. And by doing this, you understand? I'm not doing a very good job tonight. But you understand? I'm, I'm trying to get this across the best I can. Slave, servant, son. Amen. Okay. This tells you how to get out of slavery. The Bible. It tells you how to get out of slavery. It, it teaches you how to serve him. Okay, it's not just a book of do's and don'ts. It, it shows you do's. That doesn't mean it's not just a book of do don'ts. It's a book of do's and don'ts. It shows you how to get out of slavery. But what is the, what is the combination to be, to be uh, rid of slavery in your life? The combination is simply this. I go to Jesus and I say, Jesus, would you please save me? Jesus comes into my life and sets me free from my slavery. Right? right? Amen. Come on now. Good. I'm set free from sin. I am no longer, I don't care what the backslid preacher told you, I'm no longer a sinner because I don't practice sin. I hate the term sinner saved by grace. I hate that. I used to be a sinner. I am saved by grace. I don't practice sin because I'm not in that junk anymore. I don't, I'm not saying I never sin. I'm not saying I never have sin. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this, is I don't practice and live my lifestyle in a sinful nature anymore. Amen. Well, maybe I'm not. <laughs> And so I don't live in it anymore. I don't. I got out of that cesspool. Yeah. I was a sinner, and I was saved by grace. True fact. Yeah. By the grace of God, I'm no longer a sinner, but a servant. Get that in your head. And then I go from servanthood, though I still sin, though I still fall short, though I still may mess up. I'm learning how to be a son. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then when I finally get to my sonship and my father, son and father relationship, this shows me how to be a son. Not to, it shows me how to get out of slavery, how to serve, and then how to be a son. It shows me every step of the way what I need to do to get what the father has for me. I don't have enough time in my life to earn everything the father has for me. There's some things he just has to give me. Okay. He's going to give me some stuff. You guys keep watching. Whatever. There's some things that I just have to step into because I'm a son. He doesn't, I don't have, I can't earn everything that he needs to give me. There's some things he will just bless you with and give you. There are times in your life, yes, truly, there are times in your life when you have to go through some things and learn some things and you have to find the hard way. You learn how to deal with some things, and you find your way, and you do some things, and but you have to learn some things the hard way. But there are times when God just blesses you and says, this is how you do this, and this is what I'm going to give you. There are those times as well. So somebody get with me tonight and understand that even though we have, we have a, a church of young people outside and up there, up, up the street, we have a church of young people, we have a church of the remnant. Please hear me. How can you... Has anybody ever taken a swatch of material? We used to do this at Wrangler when I, was, when I worked at Wrangler, worked in the cutting room. If you ever had some rework, they would give you a swatch of material and a location for a roll of material, and you'd have to go get it, and you'd have to match the swatch to make sure it was the same color, the same shading. 
Because even though it was the same number, it may not be the same color. You with me? Blue ain't always just blue. Blue is kind of dark blue, light blue, medium blue. And you'd have to make sure. And that swatch was a, was a swatch of the original roll. You with me? The, the swatch was a swatch of the original roll that the piece that you cut wrong was messed up on. And you would have to go find a piece. And, and they would put that roll up and they would log where that roll was at so they could find it if they needed a, a, a starting place again for the things of the past that you had already done. Somebody with me. And so what happened is this, is that you'd have to go find that, that number and you'd have to make sure that the, the color matched the swatch before you begin to make your repairs. And I thank God that he left me a roll yes. with the original swatch Amen. and the original remnant. Amen. I thank God that in this church, there's a remnant that know what it's like to be moved on by the Holy Ghost. Where they know what it's like to, to fall flat, flat on their face before God and, and pray until God answered them. I, I thank God that we're in this place and there's a, and there's a, there's a remnant, a part of the original cloth that understands what, what the history of this place and, and they, they understand, they don't take it for granted when there's a house full of people. They don't take it for granted and say, oh, it's just like how it always is. But they remember the times when it was like this on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. They remember what it was like when they had less than this on Sunday night. They remember what it was like when they first originally opened the doors. And, and they remember what it was like when there was no carpet and there were no pews with padding. They, they remember what it was like with no air conditioning and they just had water coolers. And they remember the light bulbs just with the, 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 the covering over the light bulbs. They remember those things. They remember when you just walked straight out the church and straight out the sidewalk and the audience back here was on the front. They remember all the cool kids would sit on the, on the bar by the hedges. Remember that? Yeah. And, it, and it was, it had broken the, there was a bar around it. You remember that, Sister Trisha? And there was a bar around the hedges that had broken loose from the wall because all the kids used to sit on the bar. And then we start rocking it, banging it up against the wall. It's the truth. And I'm so thankful that there are people here that remember that. The original cloth, the remnant, those that were here and those that were here in the 1990s and those that were here in the 1980s and those that were here in the early 2000s, they remember the, the, the timing. They remember what God was doing in their lives. They remember how to live for God. They remember how it was in that time. And they haven't forgotten And there's a remnant that has to be ministered to. And my wife and I are going to do something for you real soon. I promise you. Because we love you, we appreciate you. Probably fix your breakfast or something. It's true. Get y'all together. Get all you 50 or something. Get you remnant people together. Get you 50 or something, 50, 50 and older together. Just love on you a little bit and tell you how much we appreciate you being here. Because, it, you know, sometimes I know that you feel like you're not needed, you're not, you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not, uh, they don't need me down there. They just, yes, we do, yes, we do, yes, we do. And sometimes you young adults, you guys feel like, well, I'm not a teenager and I'm not old and I, I don't really fit in. Yes, you do. It takes every bit of us Amen. to come to this place and make this place what it is. It takes every one of you. I'm so thankful for every one of you. You know, I, I'm just going to throw this at you and I'm going to quit and leave you alone. But do you remember where the, the, the scripture that talks about the body well placed together and put together? Remember the scriptures? Why, if, if you want to be, if, why the eye, you know, it doesn't want to be the eye, it wants to be the ear. Where's the hearing? Where's the vision? You guys feel that? Okay. It's no... No thing to see a bunch of eyes right now. I see a bunch of eyes and everybody, everybody here has eyes, I believe. Everybody has eyes. And it doesn't bother me. If there was just an eyeball laying in the floor, <laughs> it would bother me. I see a bunch of feet. Everybody here has feet, correct? 
But if you just had a foot laying up here on the altar, that might be a problem. You just had fingers laying everywhere. Everybody has fingers. It doesn't bother me when they're on your hands, but it would bother me if they were in the floor. Amen? So as long as you are put together, you're like you're supposed to be, and you're not a frightening thing. But if you're, if you're plucked out or you're cut off and you're laying somewhere you're not supposed to be, then, that's not, then you're all by yourself and, you, and, and you're not where you need to be, then you're out of place and out of sort. And that's how you are when you're not in the body of Christ. When you're not where you're supposed to be, you're not plugged in. You're just kind of like an eyeball laying in the floor. You're, I'm an eye. I can see. Well, can you? Because you don't have a brain to tell you. You don't have an optic nerve laying there. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a foot. Well, are you? Because you're laying on the altar. You're not doing any good laying on the altar. Somebody hear me tonight? Well, I'm just a finger. Fingers are good when they're on your hands. Got some friends of mine that work in oil fields and they, don't, they, can't, they can't do ten. They do seven and a half. Six and three quarter. Because they lost fingers and halves of fingers and quarters of fingers. And I never did want to be around anybody whipping a chain around a pole. I am now out. You guys that do that, the Lord loves you. I kind of like having all ten. All ten. Little devil is like, whatever. <laughs> Whatever. He, I know he, man, I, they work hard. Lord, love them. But I never did, that's why I don't know nothing about Oldfield. I lived in Oklahoma all my life. I don't know a thing about it. Don't ever, I, I just move. <laughs> I can find a job somewhere else. It's hard, it's hard life, isn't it, Brother Larry? Brother Buster? It is. Very hard. Okay, watch James walk around here and tell me it's not hard on you. Walk around here like you got a backpack on. And that's what his work is. There you go. That's just from working. Working hard. Just let me. I'll quit. Church is a remnant. In verse, let's go verse 11. Let me think. Let's go verse 11 and uh, I think it's 16. 11 and 16. Isaiah. 11 and 16. Thank you. There it is. And there should be a highway for the remnant of, the, of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Listen to me. You folks, you people that come on Wednesday night, that means you want to be here. Because the folks that aren't here, most of them could be here, but some of them couldn't, and I understand that. But we can have just as many on Wednesday as we have on Sunday. But it seems like Wednesdays become optional. And it's not really optional. It's just that people get distracted and get busy in their life. And I, I'm not mad. I understand that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's going to be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was in the day of Israel in the day that he came out of Egypt. Yeah. Listen to me. You guys are going to have to make a way. Ooh, that went over good. Yeah. You guys, they need to see you. They need to see you sold out. Amen. Young folks need to see older folks praising the Lord. Young folks need to see older folks with their hands in the air and tears coming. Give me some old grandmas. Amen. Dear God, give me some old grandmas like I grew up with. Yeah. Handkerchief in the air. Tears rolling down their face. Yeah. Woo! That messes me up. Because I can just see it right now. I can see in my mind's eye. I can see hands in the air. Tears rolling down their faces. Herod the shepherd. And they didn't even care. They were just worshiping. They were worshiping the Lord. And they, they showed us a way. They showed us a way that we've got to show another generation. I understand now that I'm almost 45 years old. And I understand that it's up to me to start, to start leading 
another generation to take my place. See, it doesn't mean, because you're older, it doesn't mean that, you're, that your calling changes. It just means that, you're, that your job changes. The, the calling is always being the leader to Christ, but now it's just the way you do it. Don't get so old that all you can do is just sit. Amen. Don't get so old that you're afraid of young people. Don't be afraid of them. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're just looking for somebody to love them. They're looking for somebody to point them in a direction toward Christ. Amen. I was at the lock-in last Wednesday night. And it's me, 44-year-old. Oldest guy there. And I'm going to be there every time. Talking to Jerry. Jerry's 34, 35, 67, whatever he is. 37. 37. <laughs> He's 37, I'm 44. We're the two oldest guys there. And I'll always be involved in youth ministry. I all, and as far as I know, I'll always be with my heart's turned toward them. Because they're looking for somebody to love them. They're looking for somebody. Somebody that cares enough to point them away in Christ. Listen, it's not about just you getting up here and preaching and singing two songs and going, going to house. That's not what it's about. It's about coming to church. And let me just encourage you. Can I encourage you, my church? Can I encourage you? My 50 and above and my 40s and below. Can I, can I tell, just encourage you? That you're needed so much and you're needed to be an example to younger generations. The Bible puts it this way. Mothers, be examples to the younger daughters and fathers, be examples to the younger men. How to worship and how to lead God. Does anybody remember the story of Simeon? Woo. Simeon? He wasn't a monkey. <laughs> in, in the book of Luke, Simeon. He was the man that was waiting at the altar, waiting in front of the temple when they brought Jesus to the temple. And he lifted up the child and blessed him. And said, now I can die for I have seen the Christ. Remember that story? You know what Simeon's job was? Well, what did he do? His job was to bless the children as they came to the temple. Every child. As they came into the temple, his job was to bless them and to speak blessing over them. That was his job. Why else would he have picked up the Christ child and, and blessed him and said, Now I have seen your Christ and I can die? He wasn't a young chicken, he wasn't a spring chick, he was older, he was 50 and above, he was part of the remnant that remembered. The laws of the Jews. And he lifted him up and he blessed him. So listen to me, older remnant. Generation just above mine. Hear me. It's your job to bless them. <laughs> it's your job to be a blessing. I didn't say to pick them up. Lord have mercy. Pick them up now, you get a lawsuit. That's the truth. They touched my child. I just picked them up and blessed them. No, you didn't. So you got to leave kids alone now. You have to be smart. So hear me. But it's your job to pray for them and bless them. I don't know the name. You don't have to know the name. He didn't say, thank you, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David. He didn't, that's not what he said. He picked the child up and said, God, I have seen your child. Now I can die. And I can be blessed and die. Hear me, church. I know I, I can tell by your squiggling. You're getting bored. But hear me just a minute. I'm trying to finish. I'm trying to. Are you listening to me? Amen. Please. Please. My 50s and downs. How many 50s and downs I got? That's us. All right. How many 50s and up I got? 50s and up. All right. Hear me. My 50s and up. My remnant. <laughs> it was like 50, 50 and a half. Okay. It's, it's so, he didn't want to say it was 100, but he's, he's kind of engaged. Uh, so, listen, you guys are important to us. And I'm trying, I'm working. Please understand, we are working on getting things to minister to you. I promise you we are. We don't just sit at home and watch television. When we're not here, we're working constantly on this thing, getting it better for you. Because I want to minister to you. 
I want to be one-on-one -on -one personal ministry with you. My 50s and below, I want to be in your face. I want, I want you to know that we love you. And my my young, young adults, I want you to know we love you. We're in your face. And hey, we're ministering to you. We have, we have young adults right now that are struggling. I got a young adult right now. She hasn't been to church in three services that she never used to miss. Yep. And Christians are kind of like old cars. They start missing for they quit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hear me. So she's supposed to get a visit from pastor. Because she needs one. Sometimes I need a kick in the honey. And sometimes I need a shoulder to cry on. Amen. But I gotta go find out what's going on because something's up. But you know how it is. You've been there. When people start missing, there's something going on. You guys know. When people start skipping out because they want to. Something's going on. But do you notice that when people aren't here, those are the people you need to kind of prod along a little bit. Scoop them up in your arms and love them a little bit. Let them know that you love them. Remember that Part of the original clause, listen. I don't know exactly when we're going to do it, but we are going to fix you breakfast. I would, I would say we'd do it Saturday, but I don't want to commit my wife. She's already got something going on. But I just want to be with you. I want to visit with you. I want to talk with you. I just want to be with you. And let you know that we love you. And then we'll do it for the 40-year-olds 40, 40 and young married and young adult. I hate that young married. Young adult, because there's a lot of people that are young and married. There's a lot of people that are young and married and not married now, you know? And so I hate to say young married, and then they go, well, I'm not included because I'm young married. So anyway, that's, the, that's how people are, okay? Just letting you know. And so if you say young adult, and we love you, we're going to do something for you, I promise you. Just get something, get something started. And you guys help me pray. We need somebody to take over teenagers. We need somebody that's, that's willing to work. I'm willing to do some things and willing to do it the way I want it done. It's truth. I've got a vision for it and I want it done that way. Because it works, evidently. Evidently it works. I do I talked to Billy and <laughs> I told him I said, Billy, I, all I do is what we did. That's all I know how to do is what we did, but evidently it works. And, uh, and he said he tried the same thing in Alaska, it didn't work a lick, but down here it works. But down here it works. I love you guys. I want. I thank, thank. Thank you for letting me be with you guys on Wednesday night. I, I love being here on Wednesday night. And, I, and brother Jerry Kuhn, God bless him, came and took care of our teenagers for us tonight. And I'm so glad he's my friend, and I can call him up, and he can just come anytime I ask him. And and uh, he never lets me pay him. Never. I mean, he wanted to pay for gas, and I'm like, Jerry, I don't expect you to do it for free. He said, Man, I get to go one on one with some kids. I'm there. So instead of being a state youth director, he gets to be a youth leader, youth pastor for a little bit. He likes it. But hear me. There's a lot of opportunities coming our way. Buster, James, and Jim, I need to talk to you guys for doing it after church. And we're going to be dismissed. Stand to your feet. Thank you guys for being here. I could talk, go on and talk some more, but I'm not going to.